Okay, so we're going to do solve the problem for lab 10, which is to build a tic-tac-toe game. Is that right? That's lab 10. That's what you did, Mike. Okay. So let's, so, you know, I've never done this before. So let, it's, you know, as a class, perhaps we can think of this as a, as a, you know, a problem solving project that we're working on together right now. And um, are there any, let's check for special requirements. If you have your book, please read the statement. Please read the statement of the problem and, uh, and, and just verify as we go along that we're building uh, what we're supposed to build. And uh, so I'm going to let I'm going to let you read that while I prepare. So please check the requirements for this this problem. Let's see what the problem number is. Oops, not that one. All right, 625. So this will be a uh, graphics program. I'm in the wrong area, completely wrong area here, I think. Oh no, I'm okay. All right, I gotta slow up. I'm starting late, so I'm worried we won't finish. So, but I, if I go too fast, you know, it's like the tortoise and the hare, right? So we're gonna, well, not exactly. We're gonna have to uh, try to get this done in an hour. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new uh, project, and it will be a Win32 project called P625. And uh, we're going to um, make it empty. delete these folders and before we forget let's turn that Unicode off and that's in general I believe right here And uh, let's copy uh, from a project that has um, some graphics code running. So we'll, we'll copy this one from Polygon, Polygon Writing Project. Let's paste that into 625. I'm going to set that as the startup project. Now I'll add existing items. <coughs> and uh, let's see if it builds. Build succeeded. Let's see if it runs. There it is. Okay. Okay. We have a we have a starting point, and uh, and I'm just going to cut down. I know that this is all going to get deleted, so I'm going to take this out. 
And um, let's think about how we're going to do this. Let's see. So we, we'll display, we'll start when the program starts, right? So we're going to have like a tic-tac-toe game, player A versus player B. So they're going to be two players that are going to basically share the mouse. First player goes, second player goes. The first player, I think, is an O. Is that right? Is that how you play tic-tac-toe? I think the book mentions O is first, right? Anyway, it doesn't matter, whichever one. So say O goes first, and then, then X goes like that. So we'll need to display the board. And then when the first player clicks, we have to detect which box the click occurred in, and then draw the O in that box. And then for the next click, we have to detect where the click is and draw an X in that box, and so on. And after each click, probably what we'll do is we'll evaluate what's called the win condition. You know, after a player moves, has someone won? Or has that player won? And uh, so let's, let, I guess there's a number of different ways of doing this. There's many different ways, a huge number of different ways of doing it. And well, we know that we have to draw the the grid, and then we have to be able to detect whether clicks are in certain regions or not. So we could we could just draw a grid right now, or else we could um, define each of the clickable regions. Maybe make those um, a class. We'll call a class, we'll call it a, a, a cell. We could say a cell. We can create a cell class. And then we'll create nine cell objects, nine instances of the cell class. And each time the user does a click, we have to determine which cell was clicked in. And if that cell already has a mark, then that's an invalid click, and the user has to go again. But if the cell is empty, then we can put a mark in there. And then after we put a mark in there, we need to check to see whether there's three X's or three O's in a line or a diagonal. So it's like a lot of work there, right? But it's pretty clear what we need to do. Now, if we use a cell class, then what we can do, we'll create one way, one way to, we could do it. We can create nine cell instances. And so we've got this, say, a vector of cells. And then we, uh, we just iterate. The first thing we do, we iterate through the cells, and we just say, we tell each cell to draw itself. But that might not work very well because, you know, some of the, the cell in the center has lines on every side, but the cells on the outside are missing, you know, some, some areas, some lines. So we could just we could just draw the lines that, that, that we need to know. We don't have to make them, we don't have to incorporate them as part of the cells. That's if we go with a cell design. And Mike, you went you used a class called tic tac toe, right? Do you remember the functions that you created for that class? Plot. Is winner is over? Process click, something like that. <laughs> so we, ha we have nine positions, and we need to record the state of these nine positions. So I'm, I'm going to go with the cell design, because that's just my, my hunch. That's what I would like to do. And um, so that means we would have, s instead of polygon, let's... Um, Let's rename this to a cell. So this will be a cell. And, uh, well, we won't need add vertex. 
but we'll probably and I'm not sure we, probably we don't need plot either maybe we don't need a cell we could just we can use a two-dimensional array is that how you did it I don't think I'm going to use a cell. So we could call it tic-tac-toe. I think your design might be okay. So we can use, to see we have to store the state of the nine positions. So how are we going to store, in each of the nine positions, okay, the nine cells, they can either be an X, an O, or an unassigned, right? So they have three states. So we could use, use what to represent three states? An integer, right? You wouldn't use a float. And a bool is not good enough because a bool only has two states. So maybe an integer, say so 0, 1, and 2, something like that. A 0 will be unassigned, 1 will be an O, and 2 would be an X. Something like that. So I'm going to leave the cell. I'm going to omit cell actually right now. I'm going to go ahead and omit that. I'm not sure that we're going to use this. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to remove them in case we want to bring those back in again. That means we don't have this include. We'll start by plotting the board, and then we'll have something like a while loop. I'm just going to go while true. And uh, inside here, we'll uh, get, get the user input. And then um, something like um, and then then we'll do something like we'll uh, we'll check uh, check if um, if selected uh, cell is uh, already assigned. I'll say like this if. If the cell is already assigned, actually let's just do it like this. If the cell is already assigned, then um, then do what? Then then tell the user to try again and um, and restart restart the loop restart the loop code. So if the cell is not already assigned. Then we'll um, assign assign a, a mark in the cell. And then test for test for a win. But then there can be a tie as well, right? We test for a win. Say test test for a tie. So we could do something like this. If if a tie, then uh, then tell user and exit program. If a win. Tell user an exit program. Assign a mark in the cell. See, does that look okay? Those general sequence of actions. But now we gotta keep track of which player is playing, right? 
So we're going to have some concept of a player. So maybe we'll use um, maybe we'll have say an integer and we'll call it player. We could make it a string. Hmm. We could say the um, this is the current player, the player with the move. Current player will be say um, O. And maybe what we'll do is uh, we can do something like this. We can define. Now uh, we can use a constant. Const int o is zero. Const int uh, x is a one. So either we're an x or an o. We'll start with the current player as o. Assign assign a mark in the cell. So here we would assign either an X or an O depending on what current player is set to. So, Mike, maybe we go with your design. Let's think about, let's suppose we had a tic-tac-toe class. Tic-tac-toe. Suppose we had a tic-tac-toe class like this. If we were to plot the board, how would that look? We would call plot, right? And then um, here, So we get the user input, and uh, so what do we do here? You know, we could do the, we can get the user input here in main, or else we can do get the user input in the tic-tac-toe class. So I don't know. How about if we get the user input, which is a point? Let's think of it. Let, let me just. Let me just sort of rough it out here. Say the user point. We'll just call it point. So C win dot get mouse, right? And um, well, I'll make a move, click a cell. And uh, we can provide more information like whether the person is an X or an O. We can add that later. So we get the point. And uh, if the cell is already assigned, we could do it something like this. If tick tack toe, oh, we need to know which cell, right? So. Maybe if we if we code the cells, we can say cell we can say cell number is uh, tick tack toe dot um, determine determine cell. We'll call it just the cell number. We'll call it just cell like that maybe. Uh, determine cell. We pass in the point. 
So we have a number that represents the cell, right? Say maybe zero through eight or one through nine. And if tic-tac-toe dot is cell assigned, if this particular cell is assigned, then tell the user, tell user the move is invalid. You know, please try again. And uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to continue the loop. Okay, this means go back to the start of the loop. It's like a go to. And uh, otherwise, if we get through this to this point, we know that the cell is good. So we want to mark assign a mark in the cell. So how do we do that? Well, which mark? So we could do if if player equals O, then tick tack toe dot mark cell, okay, give the cell number and pass in um, mark O, assign O. And we'll, we'll, we'll pass in the cell number. Assign O to cell, so like that. Else I'm going to drop that down here. Else assign X to cell. Player is not defined. Let's go ahead and define that. Oh, I called it current player. I'll just call it player. And then, uh, so this assigns some, and then if win, and then uh, we'll do something like this. If tic-tac-toe dot is O winner, we could do it like, you know, we could do it like this. So we would keep the same architecture here. I mean, there's so many different ways of doing this. We could pass in the winner ID. So we could have tic-tac-toe have, we could have a player ID to pass into tic-tac-toe instead of calling, you know, assign O to cell would be, um, I'm sorry, not assign, is, is O winner. We could say is winner and then pass in an integer. Zero for O and X for one, we could do that. Or we can just have two method, is O winner, is X winner. So, you know, we one or the other. We have to sort of figure it out what's easier for us to understand. It'll look something like this. So if O is winner, then um, congratulate O. And then uh, and then quit. Otherwise, if X is winner, congratulate X and 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 quit and return. Return from main. We're inside main. 
And then we'll do the same thing for tie, although we don't need as much logic because we don't care who's, you know, both players. We don't care which player is playing now. So if um, if it's a tie, then uh, announce a tie. So we're going to announce a tie. And then we're done. That's it. Oh, we need to return a zero, right? Because we have to return an int. Remember, zero, we're returning zero to the operating system because we're main. Main is where execution of the program starts. That means the operating system invoked us. And the operating system wants to know whether we're terminating normally or abnormally. We return a zero to indicate that we're returning normally. That's usually used for, for system administration scripts. It's not typically used for a, a, uh, a program like this. So it's not, not, not really relevant in our situation. But no, nonetheless, we have to return an int. So we need this tic-tac-toe class. So let's bring in the class that we, do, that we removed already and call it tic-tac-toe. So we called it cell. We're going to call it tic-tac-toe. And let's rename this. Tic tac toe. Is that the right spelling? Is there such a thing as the right spelling for tic tac toe? Nobody knows. Let's go ahead and uh, open these up. So this is going to be tic-tac-toe. We do have a plot. And this is uh, tic-tac-toe. All of these are now tic-tac-toe. I could just do a global replace, right? Vertices is undefined. Vertices. Why is that undefined? <coughs> Add vertex. Oh, it's not in there, right? All right, we're getting there. So we this tic-tac-toe is undefined. That means we need to include it. I'm just going to get the header from here. I know it's there. And I'm going to go into here. So now the constructor. Now I just got rid of that red line because the constructor is defined. Let's go ahead and stub all the functions. So plot has already got a, s a stub for us. Determine cell, which takes a point. Let's add that. So determine cell, that's an integer, right? Determine cell, and that takes a point. And it's a cons, because we don't need to modify the state of the tic-tac-toe board uh, when we do that. And then we need is cell assign, and that also takes uh, an integer. And that returns a bool. And this takes an integer, which is, say, a cell number. That's also const because executing this uh, function does not change the state of tic tac toe the tic-tac-toe instance. Let's um, assign O to cell. Let's try that one. Assign O to cell. And so we're going to pass in the cell number. Now, we're going to modify our internal state here of the tic-tac-toe instance. So we cannot declare that as const. Assign X to cell.
and uh, there we go anything else and we have is O winner is X winner that's a bool is O winner that's a const we don't modify to to answer the question we don't need to modify the data inside tic-tac-toe is X winner and then we have is tie right See the top-down approach to building this code? You know, we start in main and we just say, well, I need something to do this for me. And I'll just assume that they can do that and then I'll just use it. And, uh, and we fill in the details as we go down. So we're starting kind of at the top level and uh, filling in the details. So everything builds here, I think. Is that right? Oh no, we're missing the implementations, right? We don't have these implementations. Let's let's uh, bring them in. We have plot, but we don't have all of these, so we need to implement these. And uh, how do we implement all of these? This is the task. If we can get these to work correctly, I think the program will run. Just go through here and start the implementation for these uh, functions. And they need, see, they're they're not declared as being inside of a class at this time so we need to add this this prefix to tell the compiler that these function implementations are for functions that are inside the tic-tac-toe class Oh, now these won't build because some of these stubs return a value. So let's go ahead and return a value. We're going to return zero here. So we want to get it to, to build. So this, this determined cell returns a, a zero. Is cell assigned? That returns a true or false. Assign O to cell. This is a void. Assign X to cell as a void. Is O the winner? That that returns something. That returns, you know, true or false. And then um, same with the other ones. These return bools. I think that should build. It builds. Okay. But still, we're missing a lot of functionality. We create the tic-tac-toe instance. We call plot. Well, let's look at plot. Plot is going to draw stuff. Let's draw a point. Well, let's draw a line. And the line will go from one point to another. Say from uh, from zero zero to um, to one zero, whatever. We're going to obviously change this. Just drawing a line. And um, there we go. So we draw something, we assign the player O to the player, and uh, then we get the uh, we get the mouse here. So it should run to there, right? There we draw a line, and that says click a cell to make a move. 
Alright, so we're, we got that far along. And uh, now, <coughs> um, what we're going to do is um, just go through here and, and build this thing. So we're going to need to make determine, you know, where when a click point comes in, we have to figure out where it's uh, where it fits into the whole picture. So we'll have nine sections. And like I said, there's many ways of doing this. Well, I know that there's going to be, if you think about it, there's, there's two x values and essentially two y values that we need to worry about. Let's put those in here. They're not vertices. So we'll have a, um, say, our, our x1. And um, you know, I can't remember how to do this. So what I want to do here, because these, these values are not going to change. So I think we're, we're going to try to declare these as const. Not sure this is, I think this is how you do this. So this will be like minus um, 5, say. Only static values. What does that say there? Only const integral data members can be initialized within a class. Only static const integral data members. Okay, so we can't do that. This is not an integral. Let's just do it like this. It's not a big deal. Let's do this. So we've got our x1. We've got an x2. And we've got a y1 and a y2. Right, this is going to correspond to the line. So x1 is the line going up and down you know, on the left side of the screen. And the x2 is the x position of the line going up and down on the right side of the screen. So when we plot this thing, let's start by plotting the line that goes up and down on the left side of the screen. Well, we, we've got to set x1. So x1, let's see that the, the value, the x values range from minus 10 to 10. So we have a range of 20. Is that right? Yeah. Minus 10 to 10. So we have a range of 20. Should we do it? We do it, we'll just carve, to, for, just for simplicity, let's carve the whole screen up in a equal cells. So we take 20, divide by 3. What's that? And that, that'll be... We, <laughs> this is pretty tough, right? So we got 20, divide by 3, divide by 2 again, and take the negative. That's how I did it, just quickly in my head. Let's see if it worked. I don't want to spend time on this. So say we, we draw the point from um, x1. And I don't, I'm not fully confident that that's going to work, that, that calculation. And this point is going to start at uh, minus 10 and go to 10 here. Okay. Let's see what it looks like. Looks good, right? Maybe not. Is this that's two thirds and that's a third? Did I get that? Let's try the other one. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not quite right. Let's do x x two. This is what I was thinking. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's try it again. Let's see if that works. Yeah, we're 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 kind of guessing here, right? I'm not taking the time to figure this out. I'm just using my intuition to guess on that. Is that the same space as that? Doesn't look it, right? This is zero in the middle. How far do we need to go this way? Let's see if this, oh, I see this, this is 10, right? 
This is 10. So if we divide 10 three ways, this should be, you know, this should be a third of 10 and this should be two thirds of 10 because this one third of 10 here is added to one third 10 to here to gives us a two thirds of 10 here. Oh no, so that's not right. So this is, um, this is 10, one third of 10. So this is two thirds of 10 this way. This is two thirds. I thought I did it right. Two thirds of 10. This is two thirds of 10. Should be two thirds of 10. That's not right either. What am I doing wrong? Oh, not two thirds of 10. It should be one third of 10. Oh, no, that's not right at all. That should be one third of 10. Back to where we were. That's good enough, right? You don't have to worry about it. That's good enough. All right. And then the same with y. We're going to have uh, y1. And uh, let's go ahead and draw those lines. So that'll be, um, this will be minus 10 to uh, y1 and uh, 10 to um, to y1. Did I get that right? So x is going to range. Yeah, that's right. I want what? Oh, positive there. Okay. And this is, um, thank you. Got it. Okay. There's our grid. All right. Now determine the cell point. This gets called when the uh, when we pass in a point. So let's do it like this. If no double x equals point dot get x. Just going to pull those values out of the point, all right? And then we need um, a big test. So if if x is less than x1, if x is less than x1, we know that it's uh, on, you know, that column, it's on the left. It could be any of three cells. So at that point, we would want to test the y value. If y is, um, if y is less than y1, uh, y1 is the low one, right? Yeah. If y is less than y1, so we have to decide how we're going to ca count the cells. Let's do it like this. So we've got um, the board that looks like this. And then we're going to need, you know, these lines here. And it's going to rough it out here. And then... Uh, This is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Eight. Here's the pattern. 
And that's arbitrary. It doesn't have to be anything. We just have to stick to it. So if y is less than y1, then we return We return what? Zero? Yeah, right? Okay, good. All right, good. You're thinking along with me there. If, uh, if y is less than uh, y2, we're going to return one. Right? So this is here. Remember, x is less than this value here, which is x1. This is y1. When, y, when x is less than x1 and y is less than y1, it's a 0. If, it's, if y is less than y2, it's a 1. Else it's a 2. It has to be a 2. So we just return the 2. And some people don't like this form. This is what a lot of people think is easier to look at. This is what a lot of people think is easier. So I'll just do it like that. And then we repeat this uh, for the other areas. So if we already know that x is not less than x1, so let's see if x is less than x2. Then basically we just add, and there might be a more efficient way of doing this if we could figure out the algorithm. This would be a 3, that's a 4, and that's a 5. And uh, this will be else. We return uh, 6, 7, 8. Okay. I think we have all the logic there. We're going to need to check that. Let's determine the cell. Is the cell assigned? We're running low in time here. We've got 15 minutes to do this. Is the cell assigned? Well, we have to have some way of recording these, these, these positions, right? So let's do, we're going to need the, uh, as like an, a vector of cells. And remember, a cell is just an integer here. And um, and then we're going to have um, x and o. So we're going to have something like this. We're going to do I think that static const int unassigned. Make it a zero. Does that build? Just gave me a warning on that. That's all right. So we have a way to remember how we represent X and O is our internal concern because nobody passes in any code for that. So here goes the uh, the X. Make it like this. So in the constructor, let's go ahead and uh, we have nine slots. We have nine slots. So let's go ahead and assign unassigned to each slot. Remember the um, the the vector is initially empty, so we need to push nine unassigned values onto it. All right, so every cell is now associated with um, that's unaligned; it should be unassigned, right? There it is. 
is cell assigned. So we return cells of cell equal to, oh, not equal to. If it's not equal to assign, then it's assigned, so we return true. That was an easy one. Assign x to, uh, assign o to cell, uh, to cell. I, you know what? I'm going to throw in an assertion here because we should only be able to assign something to a cell that doesn't have anything. So let's include C assert. This just helps me catch logic errors. We're going to assert not is cell assigned. We're just going to call our own function. See, we, 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 we're assuming that the main is calling a cell assign before it tries to assign, right? We put that logic in main. So let's just check to make sure that main is doing its job by, you know, as, by, by calling that function and asserting that it returns uh, false. Uh, and assuming that that's okay, we're going to assign O to, uh, to the cell. And we have um, the same thing for X. Is O the winner? Is X the winner? Let's test those later. Is it a tie? Well, is a tie is going to be pretty easy. That um, we're going to, um, uh, you know, have a loop like this. We just check that unassigned does not uh, does not exist in the in the cells. We could put an assertion in there as well. So we're going to loop through everything, and uh, if if cells of i, if any if any uh, cell contains unassigned, then it is not a tie. If any cell is unassigned, we return false. It's not a tie. Otherwise. If we reach this point, it means no cell, and we checked every cell, it means that no cell was set to unassigned. That means it must be a tie. Once again, we could throw in an assertion, and uh, we would do, the assertion would look like this. This is the logical assertion at this point, that neither is a, is a winner. So not is a winner. And um, because once again, the responsibility of checking for winner that's placed in uh, main. But that's where we put the code. But just to make sure main is doing its job, we're going to put those assertions in there. Now, let's... You know, when we assign x to a cell, what we want to do is plot an x. So let's let's do let's add some private member variable, private member function rather. We're going to call it uh, void uh, plot plot o, and we'll pass in the cell number. And we'll have plot x. The outside is not going to call this, so that's why I'm putting it in the private section. These are cons, by the way. They do not change the internal state of the class, the instance of the class. 
just to keep it just to keep the logic separate from the other logic so we keep it maybe hopefully easy to understand <coughs> and here we're going to call those things so when we assign O to cell we do this and then we call plot O we're going to pass in the cell and here when we assign X to to cell we're going to plot X and here well we need this we need this prefix to get the build now this is going to be non-optimized so there's probably um, a better um, a better way to do this, maybe actually we could define a cell class or something like that to make it to e even easier to, to read through. So we have something like this, and this is, once again, this is not optimized. We have to check. Hmm. We have to have some big condition here. So if, let's do it like this. It'll be something like this. If cell is zero, then we're going to, you know, plot an X somewhere. We'll do it like this. Just for now, let's just, just plot a point. We'll put it at zero, zero. But that should be in the middle of cell zero, which is actually the middle of cell zero is going to be um, something like x1, uh, y1, right? Minus a little bit. How much do we take off x1? Was we made it three sections, right? Each section was a length of 20 over 3. So we want to take off half. That's 20 over 6. And uh, same with Y1. Let's see if that works. Oh, it's close enough for us. All right, the others don't work. Oh, you know, we don't know what's going on there. All right, so basically uh, we have to do this test. Uh, hmm. Well, we can do it like this. Well, no, nah, this is all right. How about like this? Maybe this is easier. We go double x equals something. It's double x, double y. And then we'll do this just to make it a little bit easier. So this will be... Um, So if um, if the cell is zero, we get that. So we have a big else if condition here. If the cell is um, is one, that means y comes up a little, right? So that would be um, you know like this. And uh, if cell is two then um, then what do we do 
then we have to go um, y comes up a little like that right Once again, this could be, I'm trying to rush to get this done, so this could be cleaned up and made more compact. But it might be harder to understand, actually. Oh, am I screwing that up? This is cell 0, 1, 2, and 3. This will be 4. five so if the cell is three then um, then this is just going to be x2 and then um, let's uh, I think it's going to be the same here this is seven this is eight so 6, this is going to be uh, a plus, I think. Is that right? Am I getting that? I think that's how we did it. Not sure, though. We'll see. And uh, this, let's... Let's uh, figure about this one later. So but we're getting some crash somewhere. Let me see. What we do is... Um, We go in here somewhere. Let's just see where it goes. Let's click in there. Oh, it worked. Oh my God. So that one crashed. Subscript out of range. When we click in there. What's that again? Less than instead of greater than for Y2. And which function? In which function? Uh, no, no, which function? Which one of these functions? Oh, is a cell signed? Determine cell. Oh, there we are. Okay, here. 2 less than. Oh, la 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 la. Alright, so this should be. This should just be else. We don't even need that. This doesn't even make any sense. One. Oh, that one didn't work. Well, I'm not never. We're not changing the player. Also, oh, that 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 other plot didn't work. We need to change the player. So, if here, if this, if the cell is assigned, we continue. Otherwise, we assign and then we change the player. Let's do the. Let's change the player here. This would be the player. If the player is O, then the player is going to become X. And if the player is X, then the player needs to become O. This is not working. If I click there, it's going over here. What happened? The plot isn't... I didn't, maybe I didn't... Is it in the detection? Or is it in the... Uh, is it in the plot? This is determined cell. <coughs> let's let's do this. Watch. I'm going to click in here. This is cell zero one. It's cell two, right? Cell two. Click. So I'm going to step through here. We get x and y. That's x. That's y. If x is less than x1, that's true, we're in there. If y is less than y1, that should be false. We're in the right place here. Else, if y is less than y2, that's... Wait a minute. Y should be less than y1, right? No, that's not right. No, no, no. Y, y is greater than... Oh, here. There's the problem right there. 
Or this doesn't this is meaningless. Oh no, maybe it's not. What is this? This should just be else, right? So if y is less than y1, it's a 0. If y is less than y2, it's a 1. Otherwise, it's got to be a 2. The same for these other ones. That one looks good. This one looks good. Oh. That worked. So x is here. Uh, the wind condition. We got to test the wind condition now. Oh, we're out of time, right? What time is it? We are just a hair away from a game here. So I'll finish this uh, maybe in my office, and then I'll upload the, the video, and uh, next time maybe I can review this quickly. But you'll have this um, uh, for lab today, okay? All right.